Hey, everybody, you're watching Sit Down on DJ Sixsmith. Kelly Finglass is here with us. Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team, coming back to CMT. Kelly, how are you? Nice to meet you. Hi, DJ. Nice to meet you, too. I'm great. So this team and the cheerleaders in general obviously resonate with America for so many different reasons. But when you think about the show and just your journey overall, why do you think this show has still been so popular, you know, so many seasons later? I think the show's popular because people get to kind of peek behind the curtain and see the audition process and what it really takes to be um, an elite performer on such a worldwide stage, the Dallas Cowboys. Um, I, uh, through the years, people, people really get connected to someone that they identify with in the show. For example, I know you're like, we have a, a girl in training camp this year from Connecticut. I think that's mm -hmm. kind of, your area. And then we have a New Jersey gal on our team and we have a Rockette trying out this year from, well, she's actually from Connecticut, but spent time in New York. So people find somebody they identify with. They want to root for them. People also like to be critics. I've, a lot of people kind of sharpen their pencils now and are judges and experts in vocal sh talent shows. And of course, ours in a dance, a dance uh, competition. What do you think separates the good from the great and even the elite? Like, what are some things that you focus on in particular? For me, uh, from good to great usually is showmanship and energy. Um, they're all good dance technicians. And um, the, preparation, the preparation leading up to that is what's going to get them in our uh, final auditions. And that's years of dance training or performance performing. We, for example, have ladies from other NFL teams trying out this year, other NBA teams, um, they are concert dancers, college palm and drill teams. So the dancers, we kind of take that for granted now. That's a given. People know what this audition's about. It's that extra personality, extra energy, extra effort, um, hard work matters. And those are the ones that wind up making our team. And how cool is it for you that, like you said, you have people from all over the country, from all different backgrounds. What does it mean to you to just have a really diverse mix when it comes to the cheerleaders? It's very humbling to me that our team that used to be primarily Texans, we might have one, one or two gals from Mississippi or Louisiana, but this year Texans are in the minority. I had ladies trout from 45 states. Wow. I had uh, eight countries represented so the fact that it's an international audition is flattering and humbling, though, to me, too. And then just during this time of uh, just global, <clears throat> sometimes tension and people need relief, people also need role models. And I'm very proud of the diversity of our team this year. I think everybody will find somebody that they can identify with, that they can find inspiration from. And I'm most proud of that. You mentioned the fact that things have changed since, you know, your days in the 80s. When you think about the progression, like take, take me back there. You know, what have been some of the craziest parts of the journey? Just being a member of this organization and seeing, you know, the persona and the brand for the cheerleaders grow nationwide and internationally. You know, a lot of it was the same. I cheered in the 80s, um, uh, cheered for five seasons. Three, three were losing seasons, but that's OK. <laughs> um, <laughs> For a dancer, dancing is dancing. What's different, like the little, the funny things, like the girls now complain that their pom poms are too heavy, and we're like, oh please, go look <laughs> at the, go look at the '70s and '80s poms, and and then then come back and talk. It is hard to dance with small hand weights in your hands. Um, we danced in an open stadium at Texas State, and it was hot. It could be up to 120 degrees on the turf. The heat was different. Um, in the seventies, they were making movies and those were, you know, cameras are nothing new for the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, fans, audiences, performances, all of that is still, um, alive. I think, I think the biggest change is the fact that people are coming from all over the world to try out for this team. I've had members from Japan on our squad, mm -hmm. Australia. So that's the biggest change, but we also hold very, uh, close to tradition. And that I think has been something that has been strength for, for this organization. So Kelly, I'm in the Northeast, but for somebody like you, when you're, when you're rocking around in Texas and you say, Hey, I'm associated with the Dallas Cowboys, I'm working with the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders, you know, what, what's the response that you get, you know, because to me, that seems like it would be a really weighty thing, especially in Texas. Uh, you know, you always get the, Oh, wow. And then of course the conversation immediately 
no matter whether it's at my children's school or the grocery store or a doctor's office, if people realize I'm associated with the Dallas Cowboys, they love the Cowboys or they hate the Cowboys, but it's all good. It's all in the NFL. And I mean, you know, up on Northeast coast, we we've made many appearances up in New York city and um, the cheerleaders are the NFL itself is just, it, you know, gives people something to be excited about, especially during these times. So it's, it's magical. I've been on USO tours where we've been performing in South Korea at Christmas and people are wearing their colors, you know, I, the, all the jerseys, all the teams. It's it's part of what makes it great and exciting. How many Jerry Jones questions do you typically get in those conversations? Um a lot. I mean, people have opinions. That's okay. I love good debates, critics, but the fans, it, it, the passion that you see in NFL fans, no matter what team is their favored team is um, exciting. I've seen it bring families together. We all know that you all get together with some family member to watch your team. And that, that is, you know, that, that's, I don't take that lightly. I remember days of watching football games with my father and my brothers and um, it, it brings families together. It brings people together. What do you remember about your first Cowboys game? The heat, um, the crowd, the excitement. Tom Landry was the head coach. I remember, you know, going out on the field at Texas stadium and seeing Tom Landry and the famous hat and, you know, just some legendary, things that I, I also knew were, it was kind of crazy for me because I'm a girl in a family of, with two brothers and out of my father who was a golfer and my brothers who were athletes in tennis and golf, but it's the dancing daughter in the family that is on the field with um, Roger Staubach or Troy or Emmett or, you know, it, that part was crazy. It's crazy to me that I had Super Bowl rings. So, I, you, you know, you never, you just never know. It's been a dream. It's been a dream. That's a really cool thing. So, you know, you mentioned the fact that people get a look behind the curtain here with this show. What else do you think will surprise people? Because there is so much that goes into just getting to the point to audition to be a cheerleader for Dallas Cowboys. What are some other things people can pick up when they watch the show? I, um, you know, people are going to see a lot of beautiful dancers. Um, they're going to see emotion because there's a lot, just a lot of pressure this year. They're going to see it's high stakes. We've got some incredible rookie cheerleaders that are challenging the positions of veteran cheerleaders. Um, they're going to see emotion from me and Judy. It's a, it's a tough year. Just the fact that just, just the tone of everybody, what we're all going through in 2020 just seems to put more pressure on everybody. Um, but there's some delightful moments too. Like I said, when I got to meet these rookies that we had only known online um, when they finally got to Texas for the first time, that was the most magical moment of training camp for me was to see these people in person that we had been only looking at on an application and virtual auditions. So it, it turned out to be very, a very dynamic season. For those veterans that are trying to hold on to their spots, what's most important for them? Because you're somebody who cheered for multiple seasons. It's very easy for a rookie to come in and take your spot. How do they hold on here? They continue to be better than they have been in the past. They continue to develop as performers and dancers and leaders. If, if we're this year in particular, I found myself taking notes on um, some veterans that I were notes from last season or this season before, if we're repeating corrections or um, what we call dance notes, if we're repeating things from a season ago, then they're not moving in the right direction. That's great advice right there. Kelly, really nice to meet you. Thanks so much. Nice Looking to meet to you too. And uh, stay safe, right? Thank you.